we're doing a series of vlogs looking at where we're at and where we're going after three years of off-grid permaculture homesteading. Today we're going to just touch on a topic that is foundational for growing your own food and that's composting and soil fertility. So we're going to take a look at where we're at, some of our biggest lessons learned in the last few years, and some goals for the future on that all-important topic. Okay guys, I'm in our bathroom because in our bathroom is a reminder of where our composting journey began and that is a lovable loo, composting toilet. This is what we've been using for the past almost four years now. We use sawdust to cover up and that goes into the bunch of bins that we have outside. We have four large pallet size bins that we use for dumping our composting toilet and it takes about two years for those bins to be ready then to use everything composted down. I guess our composting journey actually began before the Level Blue. It started in Alaska when we got our first uh, Red Wiggler worm bin. Do you remember that, Jamie? <laughs> we were so excited to get our little bin. It was a whole kit and we, we just had fun with it. It was great to have a little bin of worms and it was super easy. So this is our current worm bin. It's much bigger than the one we started out with and we've been using this one for about three years. Let's take a look inside. The stunning reveal. <laughs> What's in there, love? Dun, da, da, dun, da, da, dun. It's not good to disturb the worms too much. I have to say, this is not an action-packed shot, but it's wiggling worms. All right, so one reason we love having worms is because they're super, super easy, and they provide a great juice for the garden. So here's all you have to do. Uh, once a week, I put about half of this of water, dump it on the top of the worms, and then we have a little hole where we catch it. So, shall we do that? Let's do it. So then I just dump it inside, over the top, and put it down where we have a hole and it catches in the bucket. And then what is this? <laughs> so this is what we call worm juice. It's a great fertilizer. For the garden, I mix it with water, about half and half with water, um, to water our garden beds. You can also utilize the worm castings, which is good to do probably at least once a year. We haven't done it as often as we should, but once a year you can dig in and take some of that out. There it is, dripping through. Worm juice! And I also feed them about once a month, sometimes more, sometimes less, just depends. In the winter time, not as much in the summertime a little more and I feed them things like kitchen scraps, uh, big piles, now that we have cows, big piles of cow stuff. <laughs> and I like to line the top with a layer of old um, egg cartons and sometimes I just drizzle some sawdust, leaving just a nice dry layer on the top so then it doesn't get stinky inside. And that's it. They're incredibly easy. They multiply really fast and makes a great fertilizer for the garden. Cool. Okay, so in three years being here, our first year we brought in a bunch of wood chips uh, that we spread all over the garden. Uh, and then we did a mixture of, from a barn, from a, a neighbor of ours, there was cow and goat uh, turd all in there. We got a pretty good load of that. And then I got another ra rather large load of horse manure once. And then just this year, another grand reveal. Da -da -da. Big old pile of horse turd. Look what Kip and Nathan just came home with. Nathan had a daddy day, went into town for some groceries, and came back with a bonus. Full truckload of garden fertility. Free horse manure. Did you have fun seeing the horses, Nathan? Yeah, I got a pet one. You got a pet one? Was it nice? Mm -hmm. What color was it? Brown and blackish. Cool. Time to start shoveling. Woohoo! <laughs> Shoveling poop. Can't beat it, huh? At least it's kind of cool out today. Yeah. <clears throat> you guys excited? <laughs> Just think of all the food this is going to help us grow. <laughs> this thing's going to equal a lot of food. Yeah. It's at least a year old. 
um, a year to year and a half old. So that's great. And then we also had how many loads of wood chips this year from our fantastic neighbor, Mark? Yes, thank you, Mark. I think about three loads. About three loads? Of wood chips. Some other things that we've done for Soleros. Soil fertility? Yeah, that. <laughs> Is um, all the comfrey we planted all over the place. Uh, in the garden, on the swale, as well as we have the chickens in the area right now where we're planning on putting one of the main crop areas. So the chickens are in there and we just keep putting food scraps in there and peels and once in a while we'll do nice big uh, cow, you know, pile. pile in there. So here you go, make a pile, let the chickens do the work of spreading it for you. And as well in the cow area where the cows are being corralled, where they're being milked in that corral area, we're going to be using that as a garden area as well. So we're using the animals to disturb those areas and then drop lots of nutrient and hopefully build up the topsoil mm -hmm. and the fertility within the soil. Mm -hmm. And then all of our swales capture a lot of nutrient from the cows as well. And that's a way to easily fertilize Passively fertilize. <laughs> we like passive stuff. Yes. Okay, something we learned about composting. Uh, we'll wait for the crackers to go by. <laughs> Here's the babies. Struggling through the crazy tall weeds. Look at how they all hang out and protect. Isn't that cool? Okay, now we'll go on to lessons learned. One of the lessons we learned for sure is about composting is that we don't have time to turn piles. You like turning piles? No. <laughs> uh, have we ever turned a pile here on the homestead? No. We haven't here actually. <laughs> now think about it. So instead for us we go big and we go long. That means that typically you want a 4x4 four four cube four foot by four foot cube to compost well and rightly. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we go for, four by four cube, and then we just let it sit for like two years. Mm -hmm. And then we have compost. If we don't do that, if we can't get a big cube like that and or wait long enough, we throw it to the chickens. We let the chickens spread it, nibble on it, and then turn it into quicker compost. What are you coming over here for? Give Mama she gave me this. Ooh, a nice blackberry. Daddy has some for you. Does he? Yeah, I'm going to go get him. Okay. A little tart, but good. Don't move. <laughs> Thanks. You got to slap your wife once in a while. You know that, boys? You just got to do it. No, she had a mosquito on her. <laughs> oh, yeah, with the composting, you want it to be four to one, green to brown. Right, and what does green mean? Green is all the fresh stuff. So your fresh clippings from the garden, your kitchen waste, things like that. Brown is the old dead stuff, like leaves and old branches and vines and things like that. One part green and four, four parts, parts brown. Brown. And up to 20% can be manure, but you don't want to go much more than that in your compost. And of course you know to layer. You want to just put randomness in there. Don't just put one thing, but layer it all around. And we've found that comfrey makes a great compost activator. activator. Mm -hmm. So it just helps the compost to do what it's supposed to do. Um, kick, it kick starts the process. Kick starts the process, yep. Okay, now what we've learned about soil fertility. That soil is alive. It has all kinds of microorganisms within it. Kind of like your gut flora, huh? Yep. Soil is like the gut of the garden. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How does that work, hon? Well, all the little organisms are what actually feed the plants. The plants aren't able to get nutrients from the soil without those organisms. So it's kind of like the organisms do what's necessary to make the nutrients available to the plants and they, they kind of trade. They trade starches from the plants for those nutrients. So it's a really cool interaction. Yeah. So really you're not feeding the soil. You're creating a great environment for all the organisms in the soil. And mm -hmm. then they'll feed your plants and keep them healthy. 
Yeah. So how do you create a good environment for those organisms? Compost is one of the biggest things. <laughs> Compost has pretty much everything the soil needs to keep those organisms healthy and happy. And we've also learned that biochar, just in a very small amount applied once, creates kind of like little parking garages for the tiny organisms, so that can help. And it doesn't hurt to put on some extra minerals uh, if you have some rock dust or we're going to actually try this is one of our goals C90. i'm getting ahead here a goal c90 but don't get ahead <laughs> no 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 that's cheating <laughs> we've heard lots of good things about uh, c90 so we're gonna when we're able we're gonna try some c90 in our garden orchard and to our animals so eventually it'll work its way onto our pasture so then they'll be pooping c90 <laughs> right we'll have c90 filled poop <laughs> And I guess the other thing we've learned as far as uh, soil fertility and how the soil and the plants interact is that perennials prefer a carbon-based uh, compost. So more of the browns, the wood chips work really great for perennials like in your orchard, around your berries, things like that. But as far as your annual garden vegetables, they seem to prefer a more nitrogen-rich compost. Mm -hmm. Daddy, do you want this or can I have it? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Do you want to Look at this one. Perspective. Ooh, that's a nice it's like one. It's as big as my thumb. I think she wants it. You really want it? Yeah, but you can have it if you want. You want to share it? Sure. Mmm. Mmm. Is that good? <laughs> Esther pie loving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're hot. I'm hot. <laughs> yep. Yes, it is summer in Missouri. Okay, so now we're going to move on to goals. One of the goals, for sure, is that we want to become compost ninjas. Ah. The ninja trick was my idea. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so. To become compost ninjas, that for us breaks down mathematically into one four cubic foot bin per 100 square feet of garden bed space. So again, that's one bin per 100 square feet of garden space. So we need like seven bins. We probably need more than that. Ten? A lot. Like ten bins, ready every year. Yes, it takes So that's two, two years ahead. Two years ahead, right. Yep. Okay. Long term, we're thinking long term. Absolutely. Maybe we can just compost the dump truck. <laughs> Jeff Lawton might. Yeah. Okay. Uh, another goal is more worms, because the worms have been great for us. So we've got some neat ideas we look forward to sharing with you in the future of how we want to increase our worm capacity. Worm fertilizer. Capacity. Worm growing. Yep. Uh, we're going to continue to spread comfrey plants all over the place because we love them. They are great. As well as more wood chips for uh, all of our fruit trees and berry bushes. We need to bring in a bunch and just have a bunch on hand. Mm -hmm. And then, as we mentioned before, we want to try C90. Has anyone tried it out there? C90, S E A 90. And then like I said, the biochar. We haven't applied biochar yet, so we're going to try that as well. Yep. Those are the goals. Cool. Those are our goals. Thank you so much for watching, and please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, the biggest thing you can do for us to share, that's right down below. Just click the share, share it to your Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn or whatever it is, and spread the word about us. Sure do appreciate it. Have a great day. Have a great day. Bye-bye.